Michael Faroli, it's a little bit confusing. Michael, because the Atlanta Fed GDP tracker, which is, does real-time mm -hmm. estimates on GDP, says we're going to get 3.4% growth this quarter. So is the economy accelerating or slowing? Well, I think the economy in the fourth quarter is doing quite well, led by consumer spending, which looks like it's growing at over a 3% annualized rate, probably the strongest quarter of the year for the consumer. Obviously, on Friday, last Friday, we saw that the jobs market is looking uh, pretty strong. So I think all this recession talk, um, if it's going to be sensible, is about a forecast uh, for some time in the future. And I do think it's sensible, but it's not, you know, we're, I don't think we're on the edge of a recession. Certainly, that's not what the momentum in the data uh, over the past few weeks would suggest. It's not what we're hearing from corporate America. Fourth quarter, you said, is going to be the best for the consumer mm -hmm. of the year. We, uh, Target came out and said that there was a big slowdown in consumer discretionary spending in October and November, and now we're hearing from all the bank CEOs about time to be cautious about the economy. What, yeah, yeah. How do you square all that? So I do think profits are going to be challenged in this environment, even though growth this quarter and presumably next quarter we think still, do, or still should do pretty well. Um, and I think that's just that we're seeing those labor cost pressures that were evident against, again, last, uh, last Friday, uh, probably running stronger than uh, price, pricing power, which is kind of the opposite of what we've seen over the past uh, uh, couple quarters. So uh, I do think, you know, the picture from corporate America may be a little bit different than the picture we're going to get from, you know, the government statistical agencies, at least for a little bit here. But, uh, you know, again, I do think it's sensible to project a, a recession uh, a couple quarters forward, just given the cumulative amount of tightening that has happened and will happen uh, from the Federal Reserve. Uh, but mm -hmm. the effect of that's going to take some time. So, you know, I think we want to distinguish what's going on versus what's forecast to actually take place. So if we're in a really strong quarter right now for growth, that means what for inflation? Uh, inflation, uh, you know, look, the linkage between growth and inflation quarter to quarter is not a particularly tight one. Uh, so we are seeing, at least so far, uh, we only have uh, one month's uh, inflation number for this quarter. Uh, and you may recall surprise to the downside, which was, you know, welcomed by financial markets. Uh, and we think we probably have a little bit of a little bit more relief coming on inflation in the next few months. Certainly looks like some things uh, supply chains are generally speaking getting uh, improving their performance. So I would expect those goods prices, which were really strong uh, last year and earlier this year. There's some scope for those to, to moderate. But, you know, we're not going to get close, I don't think, to 2 percent uh, inflation for, for several quarters to come. But, you know, better is a start at least. So Mike just did a, a good chart showing what happens to the market after the Fed's last hike mm -hmm. of the cycle. Next week, we're expecting 50 basis points, 50 basis a points. double instead yeah. of a, a triple. <laughs> and then what? How close are we to them stopping? So we think uh, our expectation is then they downshift to 25 in the uh, February meeting and then another 25 in March and then pause to see the labor market soften. We, that's our forecast. Uh, I think there is a risk that they could go 50 again in February, but um, uh, so, you know, this, our, <laughs> I guess our expectation is that they get close to 5% on overnight interest rates. Um, some, you know, some risks they could go less, but I think probably a little bit more risk they go more than that. And are you, you said it's sensible to, to price in a recession in a few quarters next year, which it yeah. feels like that is increasingly the consensus mm -hmm. expectation. Are you in the shallow recession camp? How do we know we what are, that's going to look like? Yeah, we are in a shallow recession camp. Um, yeah, look, at, you know, if you had 500 basis points of tightening over the, the course of a year, historically, that you know <laughs> tips the economy into a contraction. Uh, we do think there are, you know, some uh, you know, that, that this economy is fundamentally healthy. So we don't think that a you know, deep recession is the most likely outcome. Of course, that's a possibility, but I do think it's also a possibility that, uh, you know, to reiterate what Chair Powell said last week, that there is still a narrow path to a disinflation that doesn't involve a recession. That's not our baseline outlook, but I do think there are two-sided risks around the, the outlook for a, a mild recession. How bad is it going to have to get when it comes to jobs or the economy for the Fed to be more spooked about that than inflation, which is above target, because they're going to have to make that decision at some point next year, right? Yeah, yeah. 
So I thought one of the more interesting things about Chair Powell's uh, remarks last week was the emphasis he put on uh, you know, getting the labor market back into balance as a precondition for being confident that inflation uh, really is, you know, going to come down and stay down.